my beloved brothers and sisters Qarun lived at a time of Musa alayhi salam Allah mentions him in the Quran so that we can learn lesson from what happened and I'm sure we all know he was a very wealthy man his crime and his sin was simply that he did not relate whatever he had to Allah rather he related it to himself and his own intellect the question posed to him was who gave you that intellect in the first place another thing it made him develop a lot of arrogance so Allah Almighty warns us through that story telling us that if you have been blessed with anything use that to gain closeness to Allah then you're a true believer and then you would be able to earn paradise you won't regret but if Allah has blessed you with something and you use that blessing to drift you away from Allah the loss is yours or if it makes you develop bad habits and bad character how can you use the blessing of Allah to distance from Allah that's the question people have wealth and then they use that wealth to develop bad habits whatever those bad habits are they are being warned through this story to say don't do that it's not good for you the destruction of those more powerful than you and I those who had more than you and I is in front of your eyes so I wish to go through a verse from among these verses in order to show you what exactly happened and to let you hear the verse of the Quran where Allah does not mention Musa alayhi salam's advice but Allah says the public the people told him to behave himself the public إذ قال له قومه لا تفرح إن الله لا يحب الفرحين. The first thing the members of his community told him, قومه, his people told him. They came up to him and they said, "Don't be arrogant. لا تفرح." الفرح here refers does not refer to a person who's simply happy, but it refers to a person who is haughty. His joy makes him think he is bigger and better than others so he can despise them, belittle them, mock at them, joke about them, make them feel small. His people told him, don't do that. It doesn't mean you have something. So now you can laugh at others. So now you can belittle them, make them feel small, make them a mockery or make a mockery of them. لا تفرح إن الله لا يحب الفريحين Obviously, he was upset because when people hear advice from the general public, it's not easy to digest. The same applies to you and I. Someone comes to you and says, watch out. You look at him and say, what are you, what are you on about? You might become upset and angry. But Allah Almighty is telling us that when the advice is correct, learn to digest it, accept it. And he's also telling us in another place in the Quran, that you should apply wisdom when calling people towards Allah. So if you want to tell someone something, don't say it in a harsh way. And if someone tells you something, learn to accept it. So it's both sides that are dealt with by Allah. Because the Quran, the Sharia, Islam is complete. It doesn't miss out anything. So his people told him, don't become angry, meaning don't become haughty and proud. And then they continued to say, Whatever Allah has given you, seek through it your hereafter, which means use the blessing Allah gave you to build your Jannah, your paradise, your Akhirah, your hereafter. From that, I learn that we all have different blessings. That man had wealth. His people were so smart. They did not tell him, use your wealth to earn Jannah. They could have said that. It would have been right. They said, use whatever Allah gave you 
Subhanallah. That's why the verse is, is mentioned here. Now the lesson includes all of us because sometimes I don't have money, but I have strength. Use your strength. Do something. I don't have money. I have intellect. Use your intellect. Maybe I have a job. I might be a doctor. I might be whatever I am. I might be a driver, Uber, whatever it might be. I'm included to say whatever Allah gave you, use it to earn your akhirah. Don't forget your eyes are going to close just now. Just now, later today, your eyes will close. Later today meaning very soon. I don't mean today as in now. But it could be, who knows, may Allah Almighty take us in a condition that he's happy with us. If someone says, when would you like to go? The true answer of a true believer is when Allah is pleased with me. Whether it's today or tomorrow is besides the point. Allah is happy with me. Oh Allah, take me away. Allahu Akbar. Whenever he knows it's better for me to go. The Prophet used to make a dua. Oh Allah, when you know it's better for me to go, take me. When you know it's better for me to remain, keep me alive for as long as you know that it's better for me to be alive. So my brothers and sisters, listen to this. Allah Almighty is telling us his people told him that use what you have in order to earn your akhirah and to build it because it is temporary. I want to say one more thing. Every single one of us without an exception have been blessed by Allah with something. You have a gift that I don't have. So he has a gift. The other one doesn't have. She has a gift. Someone else doesn't have. What is it? Maybe it will take you some time to recognize it and realize it. Today I can do certain things. I promise you, I cannot do some of the things you can do. And Allah has given you things which he has not given me. And he has given me things which he has not given you. But nobody on earth can say I have nothing. Because if you are saying I have nothing, you need to go back and check and ask someone's help that show me where is the favor of Allah in my life. Subhanallah, you are favored. You have some gift. You are unique. You are amazing because that's the way Allah created you. But if you are fed up of yourself, it's because you are comparing with others and you are not realizing your favor that Allah has blessed you. Why compare? You don't need to be like the other people. You might not have a car. You might not have a proper job. But I promise you, Allah has uniquely designed this life in such a way you have something. And that's why people need you to work for them because they don't have you. That's the reason you see. If they had everything, they wouldn't need you. But Allah created it in a way. Someone is looking for people to work for him because he can't do it himself. And someone else is looking for someone where he can work because he has something. What is it? I have my time. I have energy. I have expertise. I have a field I chose different from yours. You need me at your workplace. Now we will talk. How much are you going to pay me? So we have to be fair when we are deciding the amount. Don't underpay people. And don't be unreasonable to rip people off when you know this is 2,000 and you are saying 20,000. May Allah Almighty grant us ease. So use what you have to build the hereafter. How do I build the hereafter? Look, his own people, members of the public are telling him, don't be haughty. Use what Allah gave you to build the akhirah. Now the question is, what about the dunya? It's a simple question. If I tell you my brother work for the akhirah, my sister work for the akhirah. You say, what about the dunya? I need good clothes. I need a place. You can't tell me to just come and sit in the masjid or just do. I need something. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. Don't forget your portion in this world. Naseeb. Naseeb is a little portion, which means you are not going to have everything on earth. You are not going to have everything on earth. Your portion. You know, the other day we were thinking about Fir'aun. And we were thinking what he had. You have more than him in so many ways. And whatever he had, maybe besides the gold, you might not want anything else. Because will you live in a pyramid? You won't. He didn't have a car. Will you go the way he went? No, you won't. He doesn't have electricity. Will you live in his house? No, no air condition, no fan, nothing. Imagine you have more than Fir'aun in so many ways. And I have more than him. Sorry to compare with Fir'aun, but what I'm saying is look what Allah did to him. You know why? He wanted the whole dunya to himself. That's the reason. Your dunya is nasib. How much are you going to spend in this life? Wallahi, I tell you, 
How many million do you want? One, two, three, five, ten. Let's make it interesting. Hundred million. After that, what will you do? Nothing. If you eat at the most expensive place every day, you still will not use hundred million. So what are you going to do? Your one million, five million, more than enough. Subhanallah. The wealthy will look at me and say, you don't know what you are talking about. And the poor, they'll say, never mind, one million, five hundred thousand is enough for me. That is the world. So Allah says, Naseeb fi dunya, la tansa naseeba kamin ad dunya. Don't forget your portion on earth. You have a portion. Be happy with it. And then, when you have a little bit more, what should you do? Ahsin kama ahsan Allahu ilayk. Do good to others. Like what Allah did good to you. Allah did good to you. It's your turn. I gave you more than you need. Why did you give me more than I need, O oh Allah? So that you can spend on others. Do good. Did Allah do good to you? Yes. Are you ready to do good to someone else? Who are you to Allah? You are just a person, a creature of Allah. He doesn't need you, but he loves you. He gave you more than you need. He says, I gave you more than you need so that you can do good. Like how I did good to you. Someone is nice to you. Can you not be nice to others as well? Imagine when a person makes you feel important. Listen to this. When someone makes you feel important, don't only give it back to them, but make others feel important in a way they made you feel important so that you can spread the goodness. If you were to keep it only between the two of you, what goodness is there? So Allah is saying, when I do good to you, yes, you follow my instructions and worship me, but part of my worship is, you know, I created so many others. They are privileged in another way, not like yours. So you be kind to them with what we gave you. Give to them, share it, give others as well. You have money, give. This is the masjid. How much have you donated to this place? How much have you given? One pound, five pounds. Can I tell you a fact? The, the lights are being used. The place is being cleaned. There are people employed here. So much is happening. We haven't, we haven't even given one pound, but they spent five pounds on you. In actual fact, Allah's cause has spent on you and I more than we gave. For example, today in this masjid, today, there are people who might have used the bathroom to make wudu and so on and so forth. We came here. How much money has this place, which is the house of Allah, spent on you more than what you spent back on them in the case of most of us. So I encourage you, think about it. Put five pounds, one pound, no problem. Every time you go to the masjid, one pound. Why? I use the spot. There's someone cleaning. They're paying electricity. Why should I let someone else pay for me when I'm okay? Subhanallah. I'm not saying it's compulsory, but I'm just making you think there are people paying for you. Sometimes they have less money than you and you don't even know. Allah says, Ahsin, kama ahsan Allahu Do good, like how we have done good to you. Then what happens when someone has been given too much, too much? Sometimes when you do good, what happens? You become arrogant. Hey, I am spending on this man. Come here. And you expect when I walk in, they must all greet me because why? I put my money there. So Allah says, Don't be mischievous on earth. Don't create chaos. Don't spread sin and vice on earth. Don't do that which is wrong on earth. Be careful. Calm down. And Allah will bless you in a million and a billion ways. Allah doesn't like those who, who do fasad, whether it is corruption or chaos, or the wrong thing, or sin, or harming people in any way. Allah says, Allah doesn't like those who do that. So do good and calm down and be humble. These are just some verses. This is a portion of a verse that I shared with you and I just broke it down to the few points and how they are connected to each other. But the moral of the whole story is Qarun, when he refused all the advice of all the people of the public, and there were some in the public saying, look what he has. We want similar to this. I wish Allah gave me what Qarun has. The people of knowledge said, don't wish that because you know what? What he has has not come with goodness. He's only amassing and amassing and amassing. What are you amassing for? Are you not going to use? You're not going to spend miserly. Sometimes there's a wealthy person. His own family will tell you this man doesn't spend. The term they use is stingy. May Allah Almighty protect us from stinginess, miserliness. Spend, it's okay. Don't waste. But when you spend in a good way what is needed and you are charitable, you have built your dunya and your akhirah. 
ولا تنس نصيبك من الدنيا وأحسن كما أحسن الله إليك ولا تبغ الفساد في الأرض إن الله لا يحب المفسدين بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن والسنة ونفعني وإياكم بما فيهما من الآيات والحكمة أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم